But you know what really sucks about wrenching in summer in Australia? You know what I mean. Well, today I've got off work early for once and I thought, you know, why not? I'll finish installing this, well, hopefully finish installing this snow performance meth injection setup, which you've probably already seen my first video where I roughed in everything in the tray. So what I've got left to do um, is basically I've got to mount the main control module and connect the wires. So I've already, as you probably remember, I've already run the wires through the bulkhead behind me here, through a grommet. So they're just kind of sitting behind my driver's seat. I've got to pull them through and join them up to the appropriate cable. And then I've just got to go into the engine bay and tap a thread and insert the water jet in the charge pipe just before the throttle body. So what I'm thinking, you know, I've already got enough outrageous looking stuff in the car so I might do a little bit of a stealthy install not really but I'm thinking something in the glove box like that but of course there's always something in the way how's this for a plug board all right so in a nutshell basically I'm going to have this mounted in the glove box there. The wires will route back across the dash uh, under the driver's footwell where I've got all my other wiring connections basically. So yeah, it's now just a matter of basically feeding these through and routing the wires over to the other side to the driver's side. This is my go-to for pulling wires through tight places, especially on cars. Just a TIG, uh, TIG welding rod, this is stainless, 1.6mm. Doesn't really matter as long as you can obviously bend it and tie the cable onto it. Okay, so with the wires now routed from basically the glove box over to the other side, uh, the driver's side, the only thing left to route to the control box is a boost pressure source. So I should be able to grab one of those um, just in behind this fascia here. I'm pretty sure I've got one going to my boost gauge and also to my electronic boost controller as well. So yeah, as I expected, I've got a boost source here so I can just cut into that, put my T and the supplied silicon hosing and run it back through to the glove box. Well that's that taken care of so it's just a matter of mounting it somehow in the glove box. Some scissors would be real nice right now. Voila! So there you go, you can see it in place. That's how it's going to stay. So, yeah. Alright, so next on the agenda is running the cables that I pulled through the bulkhead. Um, I'm going to route them down through this kick panel and then up across here to meet up with the other wire that we pulled through from the passenger side through the glove box. But, just my luck. They're about probably you know 200 mil short or something. So I'm gonna have to extend these wires. You know, it's not meant to do, but it's just a pain in the ass. But anyways, I'll do that and I'll see you back for the next bit. And yes, for those of you at home wondering, that is my handbrake. Why is it there you might ask? Well, originally this car came with a bench seat. Stay tuned because I will be hopefully quite soon putting a hydraulic drift brake in this. Not for any real kind of drifting purpose, but... That is sick. Alright, so we're now at the point where I've now run the cabling through the kick panel here. Up here, I've routed it to the appropriate places. So there's only basically one connection going back to the control box which is the pump on switch all the rest go to as you can maybe see under here I've got uh, some buzz bars so I've got an accessories one an ignition one and a ground one so they can all just root in there with their screws say what and 
it's now time to just mount the LEDs. So the green one is the injection status, so whenever the pump gets power, this gets power and obviously turns on and shows you it's pumping. And the red one, which is the low fluid LED. So yeah, I'm officially finished wiring, I think. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call it, yeah, I'm done. So by right, if I turn to ignition, I should get this red LED light up because I do not have any fluid in the reservoir. Voila. Awesome. So the only thing left to do now is go into the engine bay. So, and we can plumb the jet into the intake pipe. So yeah, this is it. Obviously it's going in this pipe here. Um, probably about 150 mil or so before the throttle body. So let's pull this pipe off, um, set up where it's gonna sit, drill a hole, tap it in, seal it, put the pipe back on, and we're done. See, there's not much slack or room in here, so I'm kind of thinking somewhere like that. So it's now just a matter of doing the highly technical job of marking it with a permo. And as you can probably tell, I designed this to come off quite quick and easily. Get a drill and an 18 10 PT tap and some sealant and that's it. Stainless is certainly not the most funnest of metals to tap. So after a lot of a lot of stuffing around, because stainless is an absolute bitch to friggin' drill and tap, I finally got this hole sorted. Alright, so I've just done a test run, it fits. It's a bit tight, but you know it's good enough. So now it's time to put the sealant on it and put it in for good. Alright, so here's the finished product. So the basically pressurized water meth comes in there, through there, through the filter, and then gets misted and atomized in the intake charges that's going into the motor like that. So there it is. So I'm now just going to fill up the tank as you can see. It's reasonably full. So now I'll go inside. And when I turn the ignition, that red light should stay off. Yep, just my air compressor. So that's a good sign. So I guess uh, third and final step, I'll jump the lead to start the pump, and then hopefully we get flow out the pipe in the engine bay there. So I'm just gonna put some of this silicon hose on this hose to get it out of the engine bay, just to have a bit of a look-see so it doesn't fill my whole intake pipe water. All right, well, here it goes. There you have it. The system works. Yeah, it really didn't take that long. I know I kind of staged it over a few different days and you know, bits and pieces here and there, but you could easily smash this out, especially if the car was already, you know, semi apart, especially like in a race car, you'd be able to smash this out in half a day easy, maybe even a few hours. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, because I don't have any boost juice, which is um, Snow's kind of patented pre-mix stuff, so it's 51% water, 49% methanol, which they call basically the perfect mix. So it's as much kind of octane as you can get without being volatile or you know flammable. I think I might actually get some footage. I'll do some comparisons of basically the intake charge temps um, with and without spraying meth. So you know I think that'll drastically drop when I'm spraying just just the water at the moment, and then when I move to the meth and water mix, that'll kind of improve things a bit. And then when I go one step further again and get on the dyno, 
and bend my tuner, he can start tweaking some timing and we can put some a lot more boost in. The, the basic principle with the boost juice and the meth injection, in a nutshell basically, the methanol is there to add octane, so snow say that you know regular 93 pump gas turns to about 116 with the 49% methanol and then the water, 51% water, is there to quench the charge so it'll basically take a lot of the heat away from the charge temp which gives you a nice cool and octane rich burn so you know you can add more timing, more boost and even lean out the AFRs a bit so you know you can see gains all around so yeah who knows what it's going to make but I know it's going to be good.